Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. So the Warriors, they lost game one, round two, uh, to the Los Angeles Lakers at Chase Center, 117-112. So they no longer have home court advantage, but I'll be honest, I'm okay. I am okay. This was the game you thought the Lakers would really, really come after because the last time they had played was game six for them against the Memphis Grizzlies on Friday, whereas the Warriors had played on Sunday to close out the Kings in their game seven. So you really felt like the Lakers had the rest advantage that they were really, really going to just try to steal one. Because if you're going to steal one, it is the game one when the Warriors have very little time to kind of prep for you and little time to like rest physically, emotionally, all that stuff. So they got it. And congrats to them. Uh, Before this series, we had talked about the Lakers size and how that was the biggest question mark and (laughs) the Lakers and Warriors, they've played two totally different styles. And we saw that really, really manifest itself in this one. Actually, it was almost cartoonish (laughs) how extreme it was. Uh, Just looking at the box score, right? The Warriors, they jack up a lot of threes. They were 21 of 53, uh, 39, 40% or so. And the Lakers shot six of 25, only 24%. The Lakers, though, on the other hand, shot 25 of 29 from the free throw line. That's 86%. And the Warriors shot five of six. It doesn't even matter what percentage that is, 83%. But at the end of the day, the Warriors, they are a team that led the league in three-pointers and were at the bottom pretty much at the bottom, I think, of going to the free throw line. The Lakers were at the top of going to the free throw line. So, you know, all those tendencies played themselves out. And it was a feel-out game for sure. You know, wanted to see what the Lakers were going to bring and what the Warriors were going to bring as well. And, you know, the difference in this one was clearly Anthony Davis. He played an excellent, excellent game for the Lakers on both ends. 44 minutes, 11 for 19 from the field, 8 for 8 from the line, 23 boards, 4 blocks, 30 points, only 2 fouls though. So that tells me a little something. First of all, you know, as the series goes on, it goes to one day of rest between each game. So that rest advantage that the Lakers had uh, is greatly diminished going into game two. 44 minutes for Anthony Davis, 40 minutes for LeBron James. We'll see how well they hold up uh, going into the next one. I think personally, you know, the Warriors, they need to attack those guys a little bit more. LeBron, always a concern. He can still uh, do a lot of things, of course, but more so in spurts. He is, what, 38-ish or something? I hadn't watched a ton of Lakers games this season. And seeing him, I was like, oh, okay. He he is definitely picking and choosing his spots a little bit more. And, you know, there's ways you could take advantage of that, make him work. Make him work on the defensive end. And same with Anthony Davis, right? Like, the Lakers are a big team. Steph, every time he drove, it seemed like he was getting blocked or challenged. And there were a couple of plays where, you know, Jared Vanderbilt, a guy that a lot of Warriors fans, myself included, <laughs> were hoping the Warriors could get at the trade deadline. He did a good job guarding Steph. That dude is 6'8", long, athletic, rangy. Um, knows he has backup in Anthony Davis behind him. And... There were a handful of times when Steph drove past Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt kept coming after him. And so Steph is kind of stuck with Vanderbilt chasing him from behind and Anthony Davis looming, uh, guarding the paint. So uh, Steph got his floater 
blocked a couple of times. And, you know, in that case, like that's where someone like a Kavon Looney, who is being guarded by Anthony Davis, can't really do as much because of his lack of explosion. Like that's where he gets a little bit exposed in uh, that scheme, right? If Steph dishes the ball to Looney, it's like Davis can recover or LeBron James r- rotates over. Uh, come on, Looney, love him to death. But if he can't get up quick enough, then he pump fakes. And all of a sudden there's like one or two guys there to block his shot. And that actually happened uh, at least one time, but definitely Looney, we get stuck under the bucket and, you know, it would be tougher than maybe say playing against the Kings and DeMontis Sabonis down there. So the Warriors, they were behind by 10. And then Steve Kerr went with the small ball lineup, right? He put pool into the game and all of a sudden they stormed right back. And so maybe, maybe that's the way you go, right? Maybe that's one of the adjustments. Uh, You have to make Anthony Davis work in all those 44 minutes. You know, you can't just get close to the rim and then bail him out, kick it out to somebody else. Just take it to him. You know what I mean? You know, you got to force the issue. And that's something, of course, the Warriors don't do that often. I've talked in the past about how when it comes to the Warriors guards, you know, Steph, Poole, even Clay, they don't necessarily (laughs) uh, get a lot of contact. And a lot of times, especially with uh, Steph and Poole, they get contact and, you know, it doesn't get called. I've said my theory is that a lot of that contact is because they're so below the rim and the contact happens lower on their bodies. And so sometimes the refs in the playoffs, especially let that slide. So somehow, some way, you know, guys like Wiggins, you know, they have to really make Anthony Davis work. And if that means going small and forcing him to come out and then driving past him, getting into his body, you know, so that when you get him on your hip, you can do a little lean in and get a couple foul calls going your way. Then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, you get a couple fouls on Davis early. Uh, then he's got to go to the bench and the Lakers are a little bit more vulnerable. That could mean, you know, putting Draymond on the bench, Looney on the bench more often, and just forcing the Lakers to keep up. And then that way you can just also just run them, right? The Warriors, they do have some older dudes, but they also have some young guys who can push against uh, LeBron James, push against Anthony Davis. Because Anthony Davis, still in his prime, still, what, 30 years old or something. But his body... (laughs) is beat up. He is Mr. Glass. So can he hold up? I don't think he could play 44 minutes every game with uh, just a day off in between. So that's something that the Warriors would potentially have to exploit somehow, some way. This is where the adjustments from Steve Kerr have to come in. And, you know, when you look at like what I was saying before about how, you know, when Steph drives and then Anthony Davis comes out, there's Kavon Looney. But, you know, ideally, hey, you know, we didn't see Jonathan Kaminga. And to me, that's a spot where he could potentially help you, right? That's a spot where you could just throw it up to him. And all of a sudden you have this dynamic, athletic guy who can, you know, really, really get some of the Lakers bigs back on their heels just a little bit. All you need (laughs) is that threat of the dunker spot. And all of a sudden, Anthony Davis is hanging off a little bit more. And all of a sudden, those floaters and those layups, hmm, a little bit easier. You know what I mean? And then you get like Anthony Davis kind of going back and forth and then maybe getting some fouls on it, right? Because some indecision. Uh, So that's a big question mark to me. I don't know what Jonathan Kaminga's status is in the locker room, right? Like if he's not happy, I'm sure he's not happy with his playing time. Is it something where Kerr like looks at him and he's just, you know, uh, I've lost him, you know, his attitude. I have no idea, but 
I was hoping we would see him at least get on LeBron defensively a little bit. But in terms of another big, we saw Jamichael Green and, you know, Jamichael Green hit two threes, which in my opinion, I was like happy when he hit them. But I was like, okay, that is pushing Kaminga further down the bench or at least locking him onto the bench even more so, right? Because it's like, hey, Jamichael Green, he's a big, put him in the rotation, hit a couple threes. So that's something that Steve Kerr definitely wants is a guy who will shoot threes and also rebound. So is that something where Kaminga is just kind of a lost cause right now? You know, obviously, you know, I'm high up on him and I want to see him play, but this idea that, you know, maybe, maybe in this tight series, Kerr is, you know, Jonathan Kaminga is kind of an afterthought. I hope not. I hope not because, you know, when you see some of these Lakers and their size and athleticism for guys like uh, Vanderbilt, it's like, oh man, can we just, like I said, towards the end of the Kings series, can we just insert Jonathan Kaminga, give him a couple minutes, see how he does, see how he does. This series is better for him because there's no De'Aaron Fox. There's no Malik Monk, these little guys who, despite John Kaminga's defensive point of attack kind of acumen. Yeah. He could still get beat by dudes who have top level speed. So to me, it's like if you have Gary Payton saying, if you have Dante DiVincenzo, if you have Jonathan Kaminga, like, hey, maybe <laughs> sit DiVincenzo a little bit, maybe, you know, put Kaminga in there, see how it goes. But, you know, that's just me. That's just me. I want to see what else. Steve Kerr will put out there. Clearly, they're going to try to go small, but hey, you live and die by the three. I kept like <laughs> talking about yesterday how uh, the Warriors are taking way too many three point shots. They had 30 at halftime, 30. So I was like, are they going to shoot 63s? You know, did not. They got into the 50s and those shots were there and they shot decently well for the majority of the game. But again, that's live and die. And that's the shot that the Lakers were giving them. And you know what? Looking at the Lakers versus the Kings, the Kings look like a better team overall, but it's just a question of the adjustments Steve Kerr can make and also the styles, right? So can Steve Kerr figure out some adjustments the way he did against the Kings? That's going small, you know, if that's inserting other guys into lineup like Jonathan Kaminga, you obviously have to rely on dudes hitting their shots. And whether it's jacking up a bunch of threes or attacking the basket more or, you know, taking twos, you have to just get Anthony Davis and LeBron James moving a little bit more. Jordan Poole, he missed <laughs> that, that deep three that could have tied the game at the end. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and I literally yelled that because for the second half of the season, you know, Jordan Poole, decision-making has been a question. And, you know, we know he can make that shot. We've seen him make that shot, and that's all fine and good. But he has not made that shot very much lately. And those are shots that were like, hey, reserve those for for Steph. We get it. <sighs> you know. He had like seven, eight seconds left. You know, you want to get in a little bit closer. Maybe he practices from that spot. You know, maybe. I mean, I'm sure he does. And so to him, the percentages are the same as if he stepped forward. But still, you got the ball. Just walk into the three, <laughs> right? Take a step and a half. You know, take a dribble, step and a half and, and shoot it. And that's what I had hoped for. But, you know. At the end of the day, Jordan Poole had a decent bounce back game. His defense was a little porous, but that's true for this whole Warriors team. And, you know, Jordan Poole off the bench, 30 minutes, seven for 15, six for 11 from three, only one free throw, 21 points, six assists, one steal. So that's a good game from him. So I'm not going to harp on that final shot because, you know, Jordan Poole, he helped during that run where the Warriors caught up to the Lakers. 
And he's going to be really, really important when this team decides to play small ball a lot. And I think that keeping his confidence up, letting him know that he doesn't have to guard Malik Monk anymore, uh, that that is going to be, I mean, he's kind of an X factor in this one, right? Steph will be Steph. Clay, you know, not the best shooting night again, nine for 25 and 37 minutes, only six for 16 from three, 25 points, but he did have four assists and three boards. So, you know, you know what you'll get from Clay more or less. And then Poole, especially after the Kings series, clean slate, you know, and his first game, solid. So he has to continue that. The Warriors, they were probably a little tired and they were (laughs) jacking up a lot of outside shots instead of driving, but you know, they have to mix it up. They have to mix it up somehow, some way. And I think that going smaller clearly helped them towards the end. And it's just something that they'll have to continue doing. And then, you know, you have to worry about rebounding, right? Team rebounding, battling for, all those buckets because if you take Looney out, right, 29 minutes, 23 boards, you know, the rebounding edge in this one was pretty even throughout and ended up just slight discrepancy. Lakers had 53 boards. The Warriors had 49. And in terms of offensive rebounds, Lakers had 13, Warriors had 14. So if you take Looney out more often, then that discrepancy – will be a little bigger. So, you know, you're kind of walking this fine line and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And again, hopefully the Warriors, it's not like they're getting any more rest, but it's just that the Lakers will have less rest than before game one. So I still feel fine. Uh, Honestly, like I said, I think the Kings were a bigger challenge, but it's just a question of making those adjustments properly and then executing, right? I never felt at any time during this game one where it was like, oh, okay, this Lakers team is scarier than I thought. They're good. And yeah, LeBron didn't have a great game, but Anthony Davis won't dominate (laughs) like this all the time, hopefully. And, you know, some guys on each team will like step up and take a step back and whatnot. But at the end of the day, the Warriors definitely don't look overmatched. They just need to figure out how to use the Lakers' size, honestly, against them. And that means running. <laughs> that means attacking the basket a little bit more. That means playing smaller. I wish there were more days between games <laughs> so that the Warriors could get some rest. But I got to be honest, I'm glad that they come uh, quick because... Just can't wait for game two, honestly. We'll see what Steve Kerr has in the store for the Lakers. That's it.